On March 10, 1876, Alexander Graham Bell spoke some words that changed the course of technology and communication forever. He said, Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you, or I need you, or I want you, debatably. We don't know because it wasn't recorded. We have no recording of those words that he spoke uh, through the, f those are the first words spoken through a phone, ever. I thought it was, I want you to want me. I know. That was, uh, that was later in the 1980s. I guess we'll never Spoken know. Spoken by someone else. But we, we had no idea how he sounded because they were spoken into the wind and lost forever. And, well, maybe not anymore because thanks to some technology of being able to read recordings of that era, we have been able to hear what Alexander Graham Bell sounded like, but though not on that date. Let's take a listen. Did that fit what you were thinking he sounded like? Um, yeah, I guess mm -hmm. enough. I feel I mean, like everyone thinks that people of that era sounded more like, hello, good day to you, but you know, not so much with Alexander Graham Bell. And we don't know how Lincoln sounded, but people seem bewildered with Daniel Day Lewis's interpretation of it based on, you know, only written descriptions. So we were able to get that recording. Um, Normal, before we weren't, we weren't able to get it because it was recorded on a wax cylinder and we don't have the kind of equipment we would need to play it anymore and we'd probably destroy the wax if we did it, losing those fragile records forever. So they found a way to transfer them over into a way that we would hear. How did they do that, Kim? 3D scans of the old records. Brilliant. Yep, that's all we had to do. And that's how we're able to hear that. And maybe some, well, definitely other other recordings of the time that were thought lost or, you know, it's just a, a physical archive of technology at the time. But it's kind of interesting to get like this, well, I wouldn't say view because we're not using our eyes, of the past. Listen of the past. Yeah. Sound Auditory. Of the past. Whatever. There's a couple interesting things about this. Mm -hmm. um, the first of which you mentioned that it's not the voice we expected. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if A, that's a result of the medium on which it was recorded. Yeah. Uh, B, we did a story about how your voice doesn't sound yeah. like what you think it does. How on recordings everything also sounds higher and nasalier. And I'm wondering, this is obviously So do a you recording. think Alexander Graham Bell thought he had a deeper... I would be, I'm almost sure that he did, voice. right? He hears his voice with bones in his ear and not through yeah, a wax well. cylinder recording. I'm you know what, he's one of the first people to do this, so give him a break. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not ragging on the guy, he's got a perfectly lovely voice. So well, you excellent know. Excellent elocution. Wasn't his father a teacher of elocution, I though? I believe so. And his, we know his wife was deaf historically, so mm -hmm. he had to enunciate and move his mouth in a way that would be easier for her to just read his lips. I want to know what that number means that he started with. What number? I, I randomly just you chose what number he said? Yes. I went back in time and told him. Wow. No. He, That's deep. He, he just, for like the first half of the recording, he pretty much just counts 1 through 10, 10 through 100, going by 10, and then just starts with naming up random numbers. And that sounds like some secret Illuminati code to me. Yeah, no. Uh, I doubt it. But I think it's pretty, I think it's great that we can hear the past like this again. It's... History coming to life, sort of, more than before, it's good.